So today we're here with Dmitry Aronov of Columbia University. Can you tell us a little bit about your research and what you're doing here today? Right, so we study two species of birds, the tufted titmouse and the black-capped chickadee, which are really common here in Black Rock Forest. And we study their memory. These birds are really uh, memory geniuses. They're, they're amazing at particular use of memory, which is uh, food caching. So these are both food caching birds. Uh, and when they're faced with a really harsh winter, like the ones we have here in the Northeast, they will take any surplus food that's available to them and they will hide it throughout the forest in little hidden places like underneath the bark or in the leaves, sometimes in the ground. And uh, they have an incredible capacity for memory. These birds will sometimes cache up to 5,000 individual food items every day in very harsh conditions. And they remember many of those locations. So they, are, they really have some of the most sophisticated memories on the planet and we study a particular brain area in them called the hippocampus. This is the same brain area that uh, humans use to remember places, faces, facts. Um, and in these birds, the hippocampus, this memory storage area, is incredibly large. It's much larger than in any other birds. So we're using, we're taking advantage of this intense specialization in these birds to try to understand how memory works in the brain. Can you explain the process a little bit as to oh, how you yeah. get a bird out of a net? So if you know what side they went in, that's easier. If you don't know, you look where you can see their uh, coleca. Um, and if it's free of net, that means that this is the side they went in on. If the net was over their cloaca, still, they were in the other side because they go in head first. So usually their butt won't also go through a net hole because the net size won't allow that. So you try to get their wings and or their feet out. Um, you hold them in bander's grip. So switching them into this hand. So and they yell a lot. They he's, do. he's fine. He's not being hurt. Um, you're fine. They just don't understand um, I, that you're helping them. <laughs> I got most of them out, so I'm just going to try to take his head out, which is just gently wiggling the neck back and forth. And there we go. So he's Hooray! <laughs> very handsome and fluffy. <laughs> and now so you've caught a titmouse, and now. What's, what's the process after you catch them? Um, bands. They're just colored and numbered. Um, let's go with this band. Sapphire. 73. And that's so you can tell them apart from the other birds. Yeah, the other, birds. the other ones. They just each have their own individual color, number. Get the bird. For color band, you have this thing called like a metal spoon. And so the color band goes on it and opens. So you can put it around the bird's leg without hurting the bird. And it goes on safely, easily, cleanly. Now I'm going to take the bird out of the bag. Definitely not as bad as it seems. Yes. So this is Bander's grip, so you can hold him securely. He can't fly away. You can hold on to their feet also in this position. So we usually put the band on the right foot. So I hold his foot with my pointer fingers. Um, and then since we're doing this, it's, I open it. The opening part goes on the bird's leg. And then I slide it off. And then it's nice in there and it spins. It's not going to get caught. You can pinch it close a little bit. This is the brute force part of the operation. We got our 25 pound bag. These birds go through the seeds really fast. We have to come back here all the time to refill them. And the funny thing is, they don't eat most of the stuff, they just grab it and they cache it all over the trees. 
So if we were to go in here and look on the bark of this tree, we would probably find a bunch of sunflower seeds. Oh yeah, one of the funny things is I was refilling a, a feeder once, and the bird was annoyed with the fact that I was so close to the feeder. So this chickadee just went over my shoulder and extracted a sunflower seed right above uh, my shoulder in a branch. Basically cached that seed there beforehand and it remembered exactly where it was. Food caching birds are actually really important for uh, spreading, um, spreading seeds and nuts around. That's, uh, you know, for example, they will cache acorns and this is what helps oak trees spread around. Because they don't extract a lot of their caches and those um, acorns sprout, making trees. And so that's a five gallon or five gallon bucket. I think it's five gallons, yeah. Yeah, one of those water cooler kind of. Yeah, this is, a, we've gone through, we've gone through many versions of this over the years because we're fighting the uphill battle against squirrels and bears. Um, and eventually we figured out how to, how to make these feeders so that squirrels can't get inside. And then we started hanging up the feeders pretty high so the bears can't reach them. Because we've had definitely had many feeders destroyed by mammals before. I think that will do it. This should last us between three and four weeks, hopefully. Although if we really have flocks as big as this, maybe only a couple of weeks. You can see that this little cap has uh, some tooth marks on it. Either tooth or claw, something that a squirrel produced. Ready? Uh, let me cut it free. Two seconds. 